The VQ35DE is a widely used engine in Nissan vehicles, including the 350Z, Maxima, and Altima. While it is known for its power and smooth performance, there are some common issues to watch out for. In this video, we will explore the specs, pros, and cons of the VQ35DE engine. We'll also take a closer look at some of the common problems that owners may encounter with this engine and provide tips on how to address them. Whether you're a Nissan enthusiast or just curious about this popular engine, stay tuned to learn more about the VQ35DE. It's the Car Problems YouTube channel. Subscribe and let's get started. Since its creation in 2000, the VQ35 engine has grown to be one of Nissan's most well-known models. The grade for the best engine of the year was frequently given. While it is frequently questioned whether all VQ35DE engines are the same, this is not the case. Although there are other versions, the VQ35, which has a 280 HP capacity, is the most popular. Early models were capable of 230 to 250 HP, while later models were more potent, 260 to 300 HP. The new intake manifold, modified head ports, reinforced cylinder block, and less rigid valve springs are the main distinctions between the early and late VQ. Regarding its technical specification, the VQ35DE has a forged crankshaft with an 81.4mm piston stroke and forged connecting rods that are 144.2mm in length. The pistons have molybdenum coating. They have a 95.5mm diameter and a 30.1mm piston compression height. Two DOHC heads with variable valve timing systems on the intake camshafts are part of this engine. Since the VQ35DE lacks hydraulic lifters, you should adjust valve clearance every 60,000 miles. In practice, the engines last much longer than 60,000 miles before they require regulation. The timing chain on the VQ35 is fairly dependable. Firing order for the VQ35 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The engine was upgraded and given the VQ35HR moniker in 2006. It primarily applied to Infiniti. The intake and exhaust camshafts of this new engine both had variable valve timing systems. The engine used larger diameter valves and reinforced valve springs. Additionally, the cylinder block's height and rigidity were increased. New lightweight pistons and 152.2 mm connecting rods were used for the VQ35HR. To 10.6, compression ratio increased. The engine is fitted with equal length headers, and the intake system and ports are quite different. The maximum power is 306 HP at 6,800 RPM, and its VQ35HR redline is 7,500 RPM. Problems and malfunctions. Overheating. It does happen, albeit not very frequently. As a result, the head becomes out of shape. Check the heater's condition if your engine overheats to prevent coolant leaks through it. Also look for air pockets in the cooling system. High oil consumption. Why is oil burned by VQ35DE? The catalytic converters are to blame for the issue. They may quickly go out of order because they are extremely sensitive to the quality of the fuel. Ceramic powder then enters the catalytic converters at the bottom. Then it enters the engine and removes the cylinder walls by grinding. Compression decreases as a result, and fuel and oil consumption rise. Additionally, it leads to misfires, rough idles, frequent car stalls, and poor starts. You will need to overhaul or replace the engine for the new VQ35DE if it has happened. In addition, four catalytic converters must be purchased. You must swap out the upper catalytic converters for high-flow catalytic converters in order to avoid such problems. The toxicity standard will drop, but the above-mentioned issue won't materialize. Generally speaking, this issue is more prevalent in nations with poor fuel quality. Rough idle. Exhaust cam cover is typically to blame. You ought to review it and make any necessary changes. Any additional issues could arise due to a human factor. The VQ35DE is as dependable as a hammer by itself. Additionally, if you give it regular maintenance and use premium motor oil, it will last for more than 400,000 kilometers, or 250,000 miles. Tuning, naturally aspirated. Aggressive software for the ECU will give you about 10 HP, but that is obviously nonsense. You need to buy performance cams, valve springs, cam gears, rod bolts, high compression forged pistons, 440cc fuel injectors, new spark plugs, a performance MAF sensor, a Kintex intake manifold, cold air intake, equal length headers, a performance exhaust system, and a Motoki CU if you want to significantly increase the power. You can increase the flywheel's power by up to 400 horsepower by installing all of these aftermarket components and modifying the ECU. 
installing individual throttle bodies, more aggressive camshafts, as well as making port and polishing and installing big valves can be done if it is still insufficient. As a result, your VQ35D will spin at 8,000 to 9,000 RPM with ease and no issues. It is rather pricey, and it would be better to use that money to purchase a turbocharger kit or supercharger kit. Supercharger. If you prefer to do everything on a budget, install a VQ35 supercharger kit on your engine. Remember to purchase block guard as well. About 6i is the maximum pressure on the stock internals. There will be a 400 HP increase. Additionally, the stock VQ35 HR internals can handle about 450 horsepower. Forged pistons, H-beam rods, ARP rod bolts, ARP head studs, dart and sleeves, and performance cams must be purchased if you want more power. On top of that, you can boost pressure and add 450 plus HP. You can have your own VQ35 DET or even VQ35 DETT if you equip such a configuration with a turbo kit, plus 500 horsepower will be added. In any case, the supercharger kit is the most widely used and dependable variant. Hope the information was useful for you. If so, please press the like button and subscribe to the channel.